Greetings, Spikes. We are back for another episode, uh, version, series, uh, iteration, iteration of uh, symposium, the, the Goliath Gauntlet. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are uh, once again putting uh, Briar through the gauntlet. I say once again, we have filmed a couple games already. Yeah. If this is the first one, then there's your peek behind the curtain. Yeah. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explain what uh, Briar is. Uh, this is the deck that we have pitted against or that we are going to be pitting mm -hmm. against five decks total uh, just to see what she looks like in different environments, how she matches up against different strategies. And uh, yeah, so if yeah. you want to explain a little bit about how the deck works. So this is Earth Briar, uh, not the lightning variant there are two variants you can play so i uh, went with earth so the idea with earth is instead of um, playing multiple cheap attacks in a turn you're basically powering up and playing one big attack so mm -hmm. instead of going wide you're going tall mm -hmm. um, what that does is it effectively kind of does the same thing when you're trying to tax your opponent's hand it's just you have uh, slightly different effects there's a lot of incidental arcane damage uh, and things like that so we're playing Rosetta Thorn. It's like the best Briar sword. It's like maybe it's currently the best Runeblade sword. <laughs> it's like very overtuned in my yeah. opinion, but um, <laughs> it's okay. it just it it it, it attack its attack condition is everything you're doing in Runeblades anyway. Exactly. And yeah. You don't really even care about the two damage, just the two arcane over the top. <laughs> Uh, we're playing somewhat -y budget gear just to show that this is kind of um, budget friendly. We're playing Hope Merchant's Hood, so you can kind of, if you basically, if you're just looking at a hand that's all non attack actions and you have like a do nothing turn, you can uh, keep like your Bramble Sparks or your Weave Earths and pitch the other ones you're not going to use and hope to draw uh, into some stuff. Playing the Spring Tunic, it's pretty commonplace pretty staple it does give you uh, over a couple turns it does give you uh, an extra resource and it does block for one which yeah. is not irrelevant yeah uh, mark of lightnings they help push incidental damage through they synergize with some of your other cards as well as with briar's ability to make a volume of earth because the mark of lightnings don't deal the damage the attack card does yeah it so makes that's the attack important feel the damage um, Thing like that and then we're playing Sw Sutcliffe's suede hides they should have been suede shoes because that's good alliteration mm -hmm. uh just so that you can potentially give something go again mm -hmm. um, if you don't manage to get the um, body of lightning tokens absolutely uh so matching up against earth briar today is going to be lightning lexi which is one of her um What's elemental the, buddies elemental buddies <laughs> compatriots uh from tales of aria yeah. uh so lightning lexi is um very similar to the idea of behind lightning briar where you're just looking to do multiple attacks in a turn uh you have voltaire to give your arrows go again up to twice per turn uh so you can have some pretty explosive stuff mm -hmm. going on uh so yeah i'm going to be playing lexi i have voltaire as my bow i have a new horizon on my head to give me two arsenal slots helps with being able to um sequence turns properly if you need to have something arsenal already um it gives you a lot of flexibility it's an extremely good hat for lexi we have a Fiendle Spring Tunic. We have Bullseye Bracers. Bullseye Bracers actually does double duty here in that it allows us to uh, arsenal a thing for free. Um, and it also has Arcane Barrier. It is our only source of Arcane Barrier in this matchup, so I might try to hold on to it for a little bit longer than normal. But uh, in you know emergency situations, it's a free arsenal mm -hmm. with an additional plus one, so it ends up being pretty good. And then uh, we also have Perch Grapplers. Perch Grapplers are good at blocking physical damage for two or uh, allowing big explosive turns by giving my arrows go again. Yep. And those are on my uh, teensy tiny little teensy feet. tiny feeties. Teensy tiny feeties. Uh, yes. I believe so. Am I going first? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I'm did win first. the die roll, but I chose to go second. Elected to go second. Indeed. Like the gentleman he is. I'm here, okay. please. Uh, let's start by playing a channel mount heroic, oh, and man. we will pitch a so tomorrow. So we've already yes. been able to pay for it. Sticking around for one turn. You certainly have done the thing that you wanted to do. Uh, and then I'm going to just attack with this break ground, pitching a sting of sorcery. So just coming in for eight. So Casual eight. For eight. I will block that for three, okay. um, but I will still take five. five. Okay. So I'll make... One embodiment. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it does not have go again. I am out of resources, so that will be my turn. Uh, so before the end of your turn, I have an effect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to activate Voltaire Strike twice because it is a twice per turn instant. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pitch this Heaven's Claws with two resources floating to Arsenal, this yellow Frazzle, uh, face good. up into my Arsenal. Because I have a face up card in my Arsenal, I have an additional Arsenal slot, so I will use this other resource to Arsenal, an additional Frazzle. Uh, so I have two of them uh, just sitting here. Uh, I'm also going to put a channel counter on Channel Mount Heroic. I will put this so tomorrow onto the bottom of my deck. All right, we are going to start things off and it is going to be a spicy meatball, as the kids say, because I'm not going to forget my spring tuning. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Hey. Isn't that crazy how I did that? I landed it. You did. Um, but I am going to do... Uh, I am going to break these perch hmm. by pitching this yellow buzz bolt to give face up arrows played from my arsenal go again until end good. of turn. That's like really good. It is all of my my arrows for the rest of every the turn. single arrow. So I'm just going to put that down right there. Then what I'm going to do is kick things off by attacking you with this frazzle. I'm pitching this blue ball lightning to pay for it. So I have two resources floating and it is for three with go again. Yep, uh, no blocks. Okay. Then I will uh, pay an additional resource to attack you with this other Frazzle for four with go again. No blocks. Then I will pay uh, one from this Voltaire to uh, play this, put this snapshot into my arsenal, giving it plus one attack. Uh, and I will attack you for five with go again. I had no resources in hand. No resources. Right. Let's go to eight. That was a pretty good turn. Yeah, I yeah. guess that is how that works. So I will arsenal this last card in my hand. Even though I do have go again, I don't have resources to pay for it. So I will uh, draw four cards. All right, let's get rid of this embodiment of Earth. Mm -hmm. And I will remember my tunic. Let's see if I can attack you back for 12. <laughs> so let's start with Weave Earth. Mm -hmm. Then I will play an Explosive Growth, pitching Weave Earth, and I will fuse it with a third Weave Earth. So it is coming in for one arcane damage. Mm -hmm. uh, if it deals damage, uh, all attacks this chain will get plus one attack. Uh, it is getting plus four, plus seven, so nine plus one arcane. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, that's rough. So for the explosive growth trigger, yes. uh, I'm going to pay for it, uh, or pay for pay the one, one arcane, yeah. So uh, arcane light barrier. it up because of my arcane barrier one. And I will declare no blocks. As an attack reaction, I'm going to pitch this weave earth to mm -hmm. activate suede hide to give it go again. Okay. I have two resources floating. Sounds good. Uh, so I will take nine. Nine, yeah. Spend one and attack with Rosetta Thorn for two arcane and then three total. So five total. Okay. Uh, I will pay for one of the arcane uh, with okay. the other resource I had floating. Yeah, I will go to two. Okay. Uh, that will be the end of my turn. I will put these two Earth cards on the bottom of my deck to keep my channel mount heroic. Mm -hmm. Spring Tunic ticks up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to activate uh, Lexi's ability to flip a face down card in my arsenal face up. Uh, if it's lightning, it gets uh, my next attack gains go again, and if it's icy, you get a frostbite. It is neither. It is an elemental ranger action. We did it. But I have unlocked my second arsenal zone, oh, which no. is relevant for how I want to do the rest of this turn. Uh, so I will activate Voltaire, uh, pitching this lighted up with one resource floating to put this headshot into my arsenal face up, giving it go again. Uh, as well as plus two from so six. Yeah. Yes. So I will use my one resource floating to attack you for six with go again. Six. Well, I'll block three. Block three. Okay. okay. Stick yep. three. I have no attack reactions or anything. Uh, then I will pitch this other headshot to just come in with this buzz bolt for five. Okay. Right. I'll block three of it with Bramble Spark. Three as well. All right. To two. So yeah, you will go to three. I'm at two. And I have nothing right. else to do. So let us. Do some cleanup here. All right, so I'll get rid of my embodiment of Earth. I'll tick up my spring tunic. 
Well, um, let's just that's one floating. We're gonna come in for seven. Just crunch in just for crunch in seven. seven. You currently don't have a way to get it go again. Do not. Uh, block for seven. Okay, I'm going to pop Mark of Lightning. I will take one. Get an embodiment of Earth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, I cannot fulfill the requirements for my Channel Mount Heroic, unfortunately. <sighs> Finally. <laughs> All right, so beginning of turn, Tunic is fully charged. Then we're going to start off and we're going to cast three of a kind. Oh, we're going to float two resources. And we're gonna see what happens. I'm dead. I, I that might yeah. be the case. It might also not be the case. All right. I will activate Voltaire with one of the resources I have floating, and I will arsenal this Buzzbolt face up and give it a plus one attack. Okay. Then I will use my remaining resource to launch this Buzzbolt at you for six, fusing it with this Pulse of Volthaven. Uh, so because it was fused, whenever an attack hits a hero this turn, it deals one damage to them, and it is coming in for six. I will block with a Stirring Wildwood and a Channel Mount Heroic for seven. A total of seven. Yeah. Uh, well, I can only play cards from Arsenal, so I have no attack reactions. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you have fully blocked. And I'm going to arsenal this card in my hand and draw some cards. I'm going to start by getting rid of this embodiment of Earth. Oh, good for you. I'm going to play a Weave Earth. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to Explosive Growth. Uh, so one Arcane and then coming in for three. One Arcane coming in for three. Doesn't have Go again. Nope, I have no resources. Okay. Uh, so for the arcane damage, I will pay one, mm -hmm. and then I will block for three from my hand. You got it. That is exactly enough to not die. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick things off. I'm going to activate Lexi's ability. I'm going to reveal to you this Pulse of Volt Haven. Uh, so my next attack will gain go again, and you will get Frostbite token. one of these guys. Frostbite token. Put it over here with my... Then I'm just going to cast this Pulse of Volt Haven. I'm going to call this shot. Because my next thing is this again. I, it has to work out better this time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so let's see. So I will uh, activate my Voltaire using one of my floating resources to put this Frazzle face up into my arsenal, giving it plus one attack. Then using my other floating resource, I will attack you with this Frazzle and fuse it with this Heaven's Claws from my hand. Uh, so whenever an attack would deal damage this turn, instead it deals that much plus one, okay. and it has plus four from Pulse of Voltaven and plus one from Voltaire, so it is for a total of ten. And if it hits, it deals an extra one. Ten. Ten? Yep. Yeah, two, four, six... Uh, nine, ten. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so then yeah, that happens. I'm going to arsenal this card from my hand and draw up. All right. Uh, on my turn, I'm going to go to the end of my turn and lose this frostbite and draw four. All right. I'm going to activate Lexi's ability, flipping up this Heaven's Claws. My next uh, attack gains go again. Attack you with this Heaven's Claws, pitching this blue Electrify with two resources floating, and it has go again and is for five. Oh, I'll block five. Block five, all right. Uh, yes, I will activate Voltaire using the resource floating to put this Bolton Shot into my arsenal, giving it plus one attack, and then attacking for, uh, it is for free, and because it has more attack than its base attack, it has go again, and if it hits, I reload. Yep. Game, sir. Game, Jen. That was a lot of back and forth, and yeah, I, I I don't want to complain because I did end up winning, but those three of a kinds were horrendous. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> so I, I three of a kinded into Pulse, three of a kind Frazzle, and then I three of a kinded into, uh, it was Frazzle, Heaven's Claws, Heaven's Claws. <laughs> right. So, yeah. But here's the thing. If you if you had hit zero arrows, you were just dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, absolutely. So it was, like, just good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but, 
yeah. The uh, unfortunate thing was, well, for you, uh, was just that you weren't able to get uh, an attack with Rosetta Thorn off, because I think that that was the precipice I was dangling on yes. for, uh, for yeah. a long time. There. Yeah. Um, no, the, the pivotal turn was the nine damage you didn't block. Mm. Um, yeah, because if you had blocked that, like blocked any amount of that, then the Mark of Lightning would have gone and it would have actually would have represented an additional two damage. Yes. Yeah, that was that was a lot of back and forth. Um, very barely squeaked by there, I think. I mean, that is the difference between going wide and going tall. Uh, obviously, there were uh, like you you took bigger chunks out of my life than yeah. than I did for you, but um, I was able to just attack a little bit more consistently, I think. But either way. That was a good game. Mm -hmm. Thank you for playing. And thank you at home for watching. We will see you next time. Hey, thanks for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. Before you close the window, make sure you click subscribe for more great flesh and blood content.